The SAWS board meeting of December 7th, 2021 is called to order. The San Antonio Water System Board of Trustees will, during the meeting, close the meeting and hold an executive session pursuant to and in accordance with Chapter 551 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. The Board of Trustees may at any time during the meeting close the meeting and hold an executive session for consultation with its attorneys concerning any of the matters to be considered during the meeting pursuant to Chapter 551 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. Next, we have item three, which is public comment. I have three individuals signed to speak. The first, Susan Beaven. Good morning, sorry. Good morning. Hard to hear you. Susan Bevan, 19807 Scenic Loop Road, Helotus, Texas, actually Gray Forest. Ten years ago, the Scenic Loop, Bernie Stage, and Teuton Beauregard Roads were declared historic corridor by the Texas legislature. Scenic Loop Road from Babcock to Bandera is the only remaining segment that has not suffered from major development. Massive subdivisions in our area have severely impacted our northwest hill country with frequent dynamiting of the hills, moonscaping, light pollution, adding road base and vast amounts of sediment to what is left of our creeks, and insufferable traffic on our two-lane rural roads. I understand that subdivisions are not in your purview, but I want you to understand the context of subdivisions when you're considering the options. You've listed four water treatment options for the Wahaloti track and concerns with each. Most egregious is option two, as it has the most environmental impact. This gravity feed plan would place nine miles of sewer lines down our pristine Helotus and Chiminea creeks. This would be an assault on our waterways and would gravely affect nine endangered cave invertebrates, two bird species, and four conservation easements our citizens have helped to secure, that being Scenic Canyon, Madeline Natural Area, the 75 acres need to, next to Sam's Ranch Road, and Lisa Pack's family estate. I will add that this follows on the heels of the spec track debacle and the attempts to place sewer lines on the historic Maverick Ranch. Conservation easements are meant to protect the aquifer and waterways by minimizing or eliminating development. And I was also disappointed to see that the PowerPoint presentation that is attached to this agenda is not the same one that was presented to the CAB last week. We ask for your help in not approving a sewer CCN for the Wahaloti track, but more importantly, not support option two. Thank you. Thank you. Next, Annalisa Peace. Yes, thank you. My name's Annalisa Peace, and I'm, uh, these comments are on behalf of the Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance. Um, <clears throat> so regarding the prospect of providing SAW's wastewater service to the Wahalote track, I noticed that folks from the city of Gray Forest are here because they're concerned about this as well. Tracy Lehman and SAW's staff reached out to us and we had the opportunity to discuss this issue. As we have stated previously, options for wastewater service in this area often involve settling on the least bad path forward. A 2020 study <clears throat> by Southwest Research Institute funded by the City of San Antonio's Edwards Aquifer Protection Plan developed an integrated uh, hydrologic computer model to evaluate the impact of different types of wastewater disposal facilities on the Edwards Aquifer, which is really pertinent to this decision. They examined all the options that the SAW staff will present to you today for the Wahalote tract. Uh, including uh, direct discharge, land application, and uh, septic. According <clears throat> to Dr. Ronald Gron, uh, Green, uh, the uh, Southwest Research uh, Technical Advisor and Project Manager for the study, uh, Southwest Research considered a range of hypothetical scenarios and the size and capacity uh, of the hypothesized wastewater facilities consistent with possible residential development in the Lotus Creek watershed area. Their results predicted that installing additional wastewater systems in the region, regardless of type, would increase the amount of wastewater discharge to the environment and significantly degrade the watershed and the quality of water recharging the Edwards Aquifer. With this in mind, after this discussion with SAW staff, 
uh, the Aquifer Alliance has come to the conclusion that the optimal wastewater disposal for this tract would be for the developer to contract for installing and maintaining OSSF for half acre lots. This is not an option that can be approved by y'all, but given the significant amount of recharge uh, to SAWS Edward supplies that occurs in this area, it would not be out of line for SAWS to advocate this path of action. For the record, GIA would be very opposed to SAWS extending service to this contract, either by employing lift stations or gravity fed mains. As for the other option open to the developer, applying for a permit to discharge effluent from the plant on site, GIA would formally oppose a direct discharge permit, as we have so many other of this type, uh, that have the potential to neg negatively impact the Edwards Aquifer. Our recommendations would be for SAWS to approve such a permit as well. I notice that uh, approval of SAWS wastewater service for 300 EDUs for Source Texas LLC is on your agenda for today. Uh, Tracy just gave me a little bit of information about this one, and we are not uh, prepared to make comments on that item, though. Uh, the project is, is outside of SAWS CCN for wastewater and, and the Edwards Aquifer contributing zone. Um, I bring this to your attention in light of the conclusion uh, determined by the Southwest Research Institute study. As we have requested previously, we would like to establish some type of forum to examine and provide guidance to SAWS regarding wastewater service on the Edwards Aquifer recharging contributing zone. GIA staff has met with most of the San Antonio City Council members and has requested their guidance on this issue. Uh, we will continue to work towards establishing city policy regarding these matters. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And finally, our last item, item C, Tracy, is that you? Good afternoon. I want to provide a, an update on uh, from our briefing last month regarding Wajalote track and the proposed development by a developer. All right. So looking at uh, just as a refresher on the project details, this track is located on the northwest side of our service area. It's roughly around Babcock and Scenic Loop intersection there uh, in that area. It's located within the city of San Antonio ETJ and within the contributing zone. And it does fall fully within our water CCN, but it does fall outside of our wastewater CCN. And of course, it is partially within uh, the five mile radius of that military buffer zone. And so as we look at this track, uh, the developer came to us They are, It's a 1160 acre track. They're asking for 3000 water EDUs. Again, they do fall within our water CCN. And so uh, they are not requesting any wastewater EDUs from SALS. They actually have requested utilization of a wastewater treatment plant on the site. Again, it falls outside of our CCN. Uh, it's shown there in light green is our existing wastewater CCN on this map and our infrastructure in this area. So you can say that, see that this track is a few miles away from SALS uh, existing infrastructure. And in addition to our wastewater CCN that we're showing here, uh, just as a reminder, uh, those purple areas are parks and conservation easements located between the development and our existing wastewater infrastructure. So, and as we go back to the spec track uh, development that was previously, uh, concerns with crossing those conservation easements are, have been brought up. All right, and so uh, our knee-jerk response whenever a developer comes to us with a treatment plant uh, is no, uh, let's go back to the drawing board. And so as we walked through the, with the developer, we looked at four different options on how to serve. Uh, the developer was on board with the first, uh, looking at the first three, but the septic system was not their preference. Uh, the first one being multiple new lift stations. Uh, based on the contours of this development, it would ultimately take three lift stations to serve it. Over, and those would pump uh, over to Scenic Loop and down Babcock Road into our existing system. Uh, the gravity sewer main option would flow to the south. Ultimately, there'd be two major legs and then one uh, uh, down at the bottom extending down. That was a significant uh, extension there of nine miles. And then the, uh, if, and, uh, the concern is that if we did a gravity sewer main, we'd obviously want to look at oversizing 
uh, to ensure we have capacity for other areas. All right, and the developer came back with the wastewater treatment plant, their first, and that would be an on-site system that they would own and maintain. It is outside of our CCN. And then, of course, the septic system as the last option. And so, based on recommendations uh, from y'all, uh, we did reach out to both the city as, and talk to them, as well as our environmental stakeholders in this area. So we uh, greatly appreciate Annalise of Peace with uh, GIA, Greater Edwards Aquifer Alliance, uh, Alan Montemora with Alamo Sierra Club, and Jeff Weigel with the Nature Conservancy of Texas meeting with us, taking the time uh, to talk to us, go through these four options for this development as we look through here. And so some of the feedback we received from them, I, just looking at the individual options themselves, multiple lift stations. Again, that's three new lift stations, uh, three miles of force main. Uh, this will be over the contributing zone again. And then two miles of gravity mains. Uh, some of it will be replacement of existing infrastructure we have to upsize it. Uh, so that is, uh, they were really concerned with this one uh, because of the number of lift stations. So that was a huge concern with them because lift stations uh, are mechanical systems, right? Uh, they force the, system, the pressure, pick it up, lift the wastewater, and then move it around. There would be th uh, two on site and then a major uh, single uh, regional lift station on the site to push it all the way over to our existing system on Babcock. And so uh, the quantity of lift stations, the potential for failure because they're mechanical, that's a, a huge issue. Uh, we're talking about winterization. Uh, and issues with power, so that is a concern, those runoff power. Uh, so opportunities for failure there, and uh, of course uh, some of those lines, the gravity, either the force main or the gravity may have to go through some conservation areas along that uh, route through Babcock and Scenic Loop, uh, especially when you get closer to the end point there and to our existing system. So there's a conservation easement area there <coughs> that they're concerned with. Plus, with the lift stations, again, those force mains are under pressure, and if they break under the ground, uh, if there are some karst features underground, uh, that force main could be pressure. You're, you're pressurizing and forcing that wastewater into the system. So that's a huge concern there uh, with that. So they, had, they really did not want to go that route. Looking at the gravity sewer main, uh, with gravity sewer, it goes to the south. Um, uh, if you remember before, it was basically a fork. We had a long extension, and then we had to branch it off into two to get both sides of the uh, development. And so roughly nine miles of wastewater main. As you uh, know, gravity system, we want that to flow, and it follows the lows of the creek, right? We try to our best to keep it out of the uh, 100, at least out of the 100-year floodplain, but naturally we need it to go in the low areas. And so a lot of concern of the location and the extent. That nine miles uh, was a, a true concern for them and uh, protecting those downstream uh, recharge features. There are some to the south. We would run into conservation easements that are existing uh, going that route. So it was a, uh, a huge issue with them. There is a significant recharge feature uh, near Canyon uh, Springs, or Canyon, uh, yeah. I think it's Canyon Springs, the, the big track right just below what. So if that were to discharge in there, that is a huge concern with them. And of course, those karst features. And especially with nine miles of main being in the lows, it uh, would be difficult to, uh, more difficult for us to maintain those. And so it takes longer to respond with that main. And then of course, uh, if we did look at oversizing, which would be the natural to ensure that any new customers along the route could tie in, uh, that would spur dense, uh, more dense development in this area besides this track. So uh, option one and two were really not favored uh, by the, uh, these folks. Oops, my apologies. There we go. All right. And option three, the on-site wastewater treatment plant. Uh, as we talk to this, now then I want to emphasize that this would be, this is outside our CCN, we would not own and maintain this treatment plant. This would be the developer constructing it and ultimately turning it over to uh, the PUD or, the, or whatever entity would own and maintain the subdivision and they would be responsible for the treatment plant and maintaining that for the long, long term period. So the stakeholder, uh, some of their input 
they were actually favorable of the package treatment plant in this area because uh, with the lift stations, again, you got those issues with the force main under high pressure and the long length of the gravity sewer main. Excuse me. All right. uh, so they did look at, uh, they were desirable of a specific permit discharge. You can have a TLAP permit, which is a land application where the wastewater is not discharged uh, into the creek, much like a TB. DES permit, uh, the effluent from the treatment plant goes directly into the creek and is discharged and goes downstream. So uh, they were not very favorable of that type of discharge permit, but a TLAP is where uh, the wastewater stays on the site. It's sprayed as an irrigation for the track or they hold it in holding ponds and use it at a uh, later time, but it stays on the track. And so if the treatment package plant was that way, uh, they were very favorable of that. And of course that spray irrigation in order, this is over a rock, right, uh, in this area. So uh, in order to make that truly work, the soil supplementation would need to be added. So an extra layer of soil so that that uh, treated effluent could be uh, utilized beneficially. And so another key point that they asked about is uh, making sure that there's a Class A wastewater license operator, putting that as a requirement for this treatment plant, not just building it, turning it over, uh, to the HOA or the PUD, whatever would run it, uh, to make sure that Joe Blow's not running it, somebody that knows what to do, knows how to operate it and take care of it, is there 24-7 uh, and responsible for that system. So that was a great uh, recommendation there. And of course, higher treatment standards, we also talked about these uh, with the nutrient, advanced nutrient rem removal to prevent uh, phosphorus and nitrates. And so there is, again, with the TBDES permit, uh, there is concern of discharge in the creek, and so they want to make sure that uh, that's avoided at, uh, as much as possible, and that's the reason driver for the TLAP. Now then I will tell you, we have talked to the developer's engineer, there is concerns that they may not be able to make a TLAP permit work uh, for this project, but uh, what we had previously discussed with them is that instead of having the discharge at the south end of their property, uh, where it would just run off into the creek and no longer, they would not be affected by it at all. They would pump it up to the northern portion of the property and way, that way and discharge it into the creek at that point, that way it's flowing through their property. Uh, obviously this is a, a benefit so that they are aware, right? Uh, whenever you're just sending it straight downstream, uh, you may not be as concerned with the discharge, but whenever it's flowing back through your property, uh, it is a higher uh, concern for you. So make sure that there's no issues and Hopefully with that, if there are issues, they're recognized sooner and can be resolved quicker before they do uh, discharge off the property. And so I want to caveat the preferred option by the environmental stakeholders and developers. So right now the developer has not offered the fourth option, the septic. Uh, they are only looked at the first three. Uh, they don't uh, want to go with that lower density. Obviously uh, with the environmental folks, the lower density was the priority. And so they uh, wanted to go with option four uh, the most, but option three was their next best. Uh, they really pushed against option one and two during our discussion. And so that option four septic system, again, uh, it would reduce the 3,000 EDUs roughly to 2,000 septic tanks uh, because of Bear County's requirement to have a half an acre per septic system. And so uh, that right, the reduced density was the the first checkbox there, uh, limits, uh, and then of course aerobic spray systems for the type of septic systems, which uh, we talked about when we uh, met with about the Bat Cave and the Dirks Track previously on the northeast side. Uh, that is something that we're trying to uh, include in our USAs that they use a spray aerobic system uh, whenever they're in these areas. So that is, but a step further from that, because Bear County does regulate the septic tanks. They are do the permitting for that. Uh, but they ask that uh, Bear County or the developer take a more active role and not just turn the septic tank over to the customer, but they be responsible for that long-term maintenance. Also to ensure, as a homeowner, I, you're really not sure if it's working right, right? Most likely you'll smell it occasionally, but uh, if it's a responsibility of the HOA or the PUD, uh, they would be on it and get it corrected sooner. <clears throat> and again, just want to emphasize that option four was not, while it was the preferred option by the environmentalist, it hasn't been offered by the developer. Okay, 
And so, we, again, we greatly appreciate their time, as well as meeting with the City of San Antonio. We met with them on November the 19th, the Coastal Planning Department, uh, Development Services, City Attorney, and the Parks Department had a, a good meeting with them. We appreciate their time and uh, information that they were able to provide. So one of the things that Parks pointed out is that those conservation easements, a couple of them downstream, especially on the gravity option, were Prop 1 protected properties. So they're a step further on the conservation. Those were issued through the Conservation Advisory Board. <clears throat> so those are be even more difficult uh, to get easements from if they intended to go through that, which hopefully uh, we wouldn't need to. But there is, on the preliminary plans, it looks like we most likely would need to. As far as regulations, uh, there is no requirement right now. Right now, they're, what they call the old sector plan is the northern plan. It was uh, established in 2010 and for the northern side. And it's really a, not a requirement. It's a guide to what types of properties develop where and how. And so for this area, we're looking at country and real estate, so a little larger properties uh, and a little less density. And so the city said they could work with that. Uh, to go back and forth with the developer saying, well, your density is a little much. Uh, let's see if we can push that back. But it's really just a guide, not something they can truly enforce. And so <clears throat> uh, the other aspect is, I did mention, it's partially within the ETJ military protection zone. So there will be a noise and light restriction on it because of that uh, for half of it. Uh, the city will take care of the part within that um, re uh, restricted area. Uh, with Bear County, and there would be a note placed on the plat, uh, of course, uh, with that restriction. But uh, Bear County would enforce the other portion of it, and that is, I believe, just a noise restriction, uh, not necessarily uh, a light restriction also. Excuse me, a light restriction and not a noise. My apologies. All right, and one other option uh, that as we were looking at it, because there's really no showstoppers to stop the development is what we got from the city. Uh, to make sure that we can stop this, uh, but we can add things. And so a special uh, district for project funding, as you've seen several of these on the west side where they're doing uh, the WIPs and the special utility districts uh, with these special fundings. And so whenever that works out, we can, and the city of San Antonio approves that, we can add stipulations to help manage the growth and we could put or we couldn't, excuse me, the city of San Antonio could work with that. And we've worked with the city of San Antonio uh, multiple times on these. Uh, we'll, we'll review all of them with them and give input on that. So that could be a, a document to help manage the growth and uh, make some requirements. And then ultimately, uh, discussed this last time, is COSA has to, or will need to consent to the CCN because this is outside our CCN. If they were to build a package plant, and try to serve these customers individually in order to get the individual services or customers to pay, uh, they would need to establish a CCN, a sewer CCN for this project or for this property. And so the city of San Antonio <coughs> does have the opportunity to uh, consent to that because they fall within the city of San Antonio ETJ. And so again, uh, good discussion with them. Uh, unfortunately, no showstoppers uh, and I guess really right now what we're looking at is uh, some feedback from you as a board, how you would like us to look at it. Right now, one option one and two are really the only ones that we can control, right? Uh, they're outside our CCN. Uh, if it's a lift station force main or gravity sewer system, that would be tied into our system. We can control that. Uh, for uh, option three and four, we don't have any uh, real control over that. What we can do is object to a TCEQ permit and what we're trying to do work through now is, can we issue a, a utility service agreement for the water, which we do have the ability, they fall within our CCN, there are, is, we're able to serve water, no problem, uh, with some uh, minor improvements, so that's not a concern. But if we can add in this utility service agreement some stipulations, such as what uh, uh, the environmental uh, stakeholders mentioned, as well as some that we talked about in, our previous, in the previous briefing, and place those comments in the USA and then uh, move forward. Uh, of course, that would not uh, prevent us from protesting the CCN application, nor would it prevent the city. And we've actually, uh, in the 
preliminary draft, we've already gotten legal to install information to that, that we, anything we do agree to or approve would not restrict our ability to uh, oppose the TCQ permit. And so with that, that's the information that I have uh, based on your feedback. And then if you have other additional feedback, I'd love to hear it and see what else we could do to uh, provide you information. Thank you, Tracy. So I just want to ask a question for clarification because I think I heard you say if we could include it in a USA, we would have these additional restrictions related to the package plant. So can we impose that in the, ser the utility service agreement for water? Yes. Yes. In the so even though it's for water, we can add these additional restrictions on the wastewater side. Yes. We don't issue a utility service agreement unless we know how the water and sewer will be served. And so I, I just, I, we would be negotiating with the developer on these requirements uh, uh, that we would be adding. Right. Uh, but they're not, I mean, the, in, in the meetings, you've sort of had these discussions with the developer regarding yes. what to expect if we were to go with this option three. Yes, certainly. Okay. Uh, but ultimately, uh, we do have the responsibility to serve the CCN or release it for the water. Component. Water. Yes. I understand yeah. that, but I was not... I wanted to make sure I was clear in my understanding of what we could impose on the other side in a water utility service agreement. Okay. Trustee Potter? Tracy, I just wanted to comment on, um, I, I agree that it seems like the best solution right now will be the package plan with the TLAP. Um, Hopefully that could be incorporated into it. That will provide an extra layer of peace, I think, for everybody. Yes. Um, I know very well this area, and, and I, I do hear the concerns, environmental concerns, particularly a study chimney I created myself before. Um, so, um, yes, hopefully, hopefully that will be the solution rather than being looking at any of the others. Trustee Hardberger. Um, it's my understanding that at least GIA was preferring the septic systems that would limit lot size or obligate larger lot sizes. I'm just wondering with the package plant, like which of these options has any sort of lot size, um, I guess, obligations associated with it. You can tell it's time for me to eat. My brain's done. Um, so or like which ones, are there any that would have more of a low density obligation associated with them or? So just going with the septic systems, uh, mm -hmm. Bear County does require a half an acre per okay. septic system. And um, are there any lot restrictions with any of the other ones, one way or the other? No, just what they can okay. discharge and get a permit for discharge. Okay, so they would just be limited, I guess impervious, impervious cover might yes. be limited through Edwards or that sort of thing? Yeah, and actually uh, they are in the contributing zone, so uh, the developer has committed to 30% impervious cover, which is higher than what they uh, need to be, or excuse me, lower, lower. than what they need to be. And so uh, they are making an effort there to make it uh, a more uh, conceivable plan. Okay. Thank you. I think that's it. Any other feedback for staff? Uh, Mr. Prentoy? Go ahead, Mayor. I just wanted to mention you were talking about um, in the water CCN some restrictions on the wastewater. Included in that is the our continued ability to object to the permit right. once to get to TCQ. So I understood that part, but I just it. Yeah, thank you, <laughs> Mayor. So um, I don't think there's anybody more qualified to assess um, the um, scenarios of 
what could happen with the recharge on this than Dr. Green, which is he's referred to in this letter. What is um, uh, what is a timeline for this? I mean, do we do we have a? Uh, so they are. Uh, their preference would be to come back in January for a uh, decision uh, motion okay. on the item. They, we have been dealing with them for several months now, uh, working through this internally as well as uh, working with uh, making the briefings to get your input on how we do this because this is a little different. Uh, again, we don't typically approve package treatment plants uh, in this area. So. Right, and and none of the options seem all that great. Um, and so if, so the developer, um, has, have they requested wastewater service? No, they are. Only water service. Yes, correct. And so their intent is to apply for the permit for the package yeah. treatment plan. Right. Well, okay. that was their initial, as whenever they submitted the USA, was they wanted to go with the package treatment plan. Obviously, they've worked with us through these scenarios, providing us information and data uh, and cost estimates. So they have been an active part. Their engineer has been active in the looking at all the other options. Uh, but with the lower density of septic, uh, they haven't been responsive to that option. Which option? The septic option, option four. The septic option. Um, but our choice of whether or not to extend wastewater service would force them to make that choice for themselves, whether they apply for a permit or they're going to require septic on site. So, and I guess that's the next, the key point, we can really only control option one and two. Right. Uh, so uh, if we say no to either one of those, then they that would. That forces them to decide how they're right. going to handle it. And then at that point, we will have um, options uh, to determine whether or not we want to be supportive or, or in protest Certainly. of their permit. Okay. And that would be at the city level with the CC. And of course, CC, uh, saw our COSA staff always works with us. Sure. Um, and, and what has been their reception to the idea of us working together to figure out a, a solution to it? Uh, th they've been responsive. Most definitely. Ultimately, uh, the package treatment plan is a lower cost for them as an option uh, because they don't have to pay impact fees, right? Uh, once you add all that infrastructure uh, plus the impact fees uh, based on preliminary estimates, option one and two are actually more expensive for them. So, uh, but really the conservation easements are one of the huge concerns that we, we see on our end as well as uh, protecting the aquifer from that. We think the right. three and four would definitely be a better option. Yeah, well, I mean, I, there's a lot to digest here, Certainly. no pun intended, um, that I think need a little bit of time to, to think through. Um, you know, at first blush, the, the bottom line is how do we re mitigate risk to the aquifer? Yes. And so, you know, ultimately, as we think through what are the, what's the best of the four options or if there's another something that we're not thinking of, the bottom line will be how do we best, which option best mitigates the risk to the watershed. So, um, I mean, I'm, I'm glad this is just a briefing. Yes. Um, you've given us a lot to think about, Tracy. Thank you. All right. So, this is our second briefing. Yes. And the request from staff is to, initially it was to go back and get feedback from uh, the environment, our environmental stakeholders and others. And so now you've come back. I, I want to make sure we're being clear with the staff because um, I, I think what I'm hearing amongst the Board of Trustees is option one and two are off the table. We're not inclined to uh, be on board with those options. Options three and four are on the table. The developer is not excited about four. So we're sending the staff off to discuss the USA for water with these with these additional requirements in the USA for the developer and our ability to um, appeal any future decisions and then it goes to the city for a permit so that's where we are today so I want to make sure everybody understands where we are so we won't be surprised when this comes back with what I'm hearing today okay Okay. Thank you very much. You. We'll actively work with the engineer and developer to uh, put, nail down those requirements.
appreciate okay. your time. Thank you. Um, this is item 44, and uh, this is the time that staff seeks input on future briefings. I think we talked earlier today about the CCN and scheduling that. Is there anything else you want to give staff for a future briefing? Okay. Uh, the next we're going to move to item 46, which, which is the executive session item. So the regular session of December 7th, 2021, regular board meeting is hereby recessed to hold an executive session and discuss the matters listed pursuant to section 551-071 of the Texas Open Meetings Act. 